Okay, so I want to make a quick video off the cuff here. And the title of this video is The Sin of Hating Cops. The Sin of Hating Cops. And the Bible says in Galatians 5, what the works of the flesh are. And it tells us uh, how to identify them and how to avoid them. And the Bible says in verse 19 in Galatians 5, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the Bible says in verse 20, it mentions hatred. And obviously, we know, you probably know, if you're watching this video, that there is a uh, righteous hatred in the world. And God gave us the ability to hate certain things. And my prayer is that I'll love everything and everyone that God loves, and I'll hate everything that God hates. Uh, however, you know, there's no doubt that most of our hatred is carnal and fleshly. Now, I think, um, as I've thought about it over the years and kind of just been dwelling on it specifically the last couple days, um, you know, police officers get a lot of flack in our country. And, you know, often for good reasons. Um, they often are trigger happy. They often um, do commit violence um, in what seems to be a high volume. But the truth is, that really isn't most cops. And I used to be very, I used to very much lean towards being very critical of cops and um, to the point where it was, would become a sinful resentment towards cops. And, you know, I believe it's very important that we as Christians, we do not attribute um, bad intentions to other people without evidence. And the bottom line is this, most police officers are just normal guys trying to do their jobs. And as we'll see in the Bible, you know, in the Bible, I believe the, the cop equals the centurion. You know, the, the officers that, that God uh, basically gives us an example of are the Roman centurions. Now, if anybody had a reason to hate cops or the centurions, it would be Jesus Christ and his fellow Israelis, his fellow, his fellow Jews, because they were foreign occupiers in the land. However, it's a resounding doctrine in the New Testament, and it's laid out for a reason. The centurions were often people who got saved, people who ministered to Christ and who Christ ministered to in the Bible. And those are the cops of our day. And what we have to understand is, you know, the cops truly, they don't know what they do. I mean, they're just, they want to do the right thing. And here's the thing. If we as Christians or even conservative Americans want to keep our guns and our rights and our freedom and our liberty, you know, we would do well to love the police officer as our neighbor and as ourself because we don't want to repel them as as Christians and conservatives we don't want to repel them to the other side so that when when you know the crap hits the fan they remember all the resentment that the population had towards them and they team up with the government we want them on our side and besides all that you know whatever happens happens but besides all that it's not biblical to hate cops. And what really got me thinking about this is, you know, I'm so thankful for the testimonies of uh, the Christians that God has put in my life. And when I started going to church, there were a lot of cops that went to my church. Several of the deacons were cops, are cops, and um, several cops go to my church. And the bottom line is, they are some of the best Christians I know and they have some of the best families I know, and they taught me so much about the Bible, and they, they corrected me when I needed to be corrected. And, you know, what I really love about some cops, you know, obviously there are some hothead cops. Obviously there are some psychopath, reprobate cops that get into that position 
in order to abuse it. And unfortunately, that's what psychopaths do. That's what pedophile, that's why pedophiles become teachers and priests and pastors and Sunday school teachers. That's why people who like to abuse and, and hurt the weak intentionally position themselves in those places of authority so that they can get their kicks without um, much oversight, you know, and under the guise of, of doing a job. But let's look at some Bible verses, you know, and again, I'm just, I'm thankful for the, the testimony of the Christian cops in my life. And you know what I realized? The cops aren't our enemy. And another thing I realized is, you know, a lot of weird, a lot of weirdos hate cops. I don't know if I want to team up with them in that regard. A lot of weirdos like uh, communists and anarchists and socialists, they just hate cops. Why? Look, if, if this is the portion of our cup in America that we have police officers that, you know, pull us over a little bit and we don't have as much freedom as we'd like, look, it's obviously a fine balance, you know. Obviously, we should discuss and have a discourse about what our rights should be and bring up any concerns of the cops violating those rights. But on the other hand, they're not our enemy. And the bottom line is they are just doing their job. And look, I understand the problem with that logic that, um, you know, you know, we can't just give people carte blanche to do whatever they want just because they're doing their job. But the bottom line is they are not our enemy. Their superiors are the enemy, the new world order, the, you know, the, uh, the people who are really evil at the top and who, who filter down the, um, their commandments and, you know, implore their servants, the centurions or the cops to do something evil. But we'll, we'll see in the Bible that the Bible doesn't hold them especially at fault. It, it just, you know, basically shows that there are sinners just like us and they need to be saved and Christ wants to minister to them. And we as Christians, you know, should uh, love them the best we can. Um, the Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 8, it says in uh, verse 5, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. What do we see from this man here, this centurion? We see a man of great humility. We see a man of great faith. And we see a man who loves his neighbor, his servant. He loves and he is treating his servant as himself. He, we see somebody who is following New Testament principles and seeking Jesus Christ. And of course, this is in here for a reason. Now, he, I mean, he believed Christ right away. He said, look, he said, look, I don't deserve you to come into my house, Jesus. Just speak the word. Just speak it like you did it at creation. And like the father did a creation and he'll be, he'll be healed. Look, that's a man of faith. That is not a wicked servant. And you could say, you know, if you're going to compare the centurions, the occupying force of the Roman Empire in Jesus' time to the cops today, look, I mean, it's, they're probably, we're, we're doing a, even more wrong than the cops that we have today. I mean, the cops are not a foreign occupying force. The cops are the authority law enforcement structure that we have made for ourselves. It's, it's our own fault. They haven't marched in here from a foreign nation and imposed their will on us. Let's look at a couple other scriptures. I don't know this is already a long video and I had a long intro, but I'm just making this off the cuff and I feel like it's uh, something that's been laid on my heart to talk about. Matthew 27, let's see what Matthew 27 says. So in Matthew 27, we see another interaction with a centurion. And look, of course, you'll see a, you'll see a centurion piercing Jesus' side. You'll see a centurion persecuting Paul. But you'll also see centurions uh, trembling and shaking at, the, at Calvary and saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Truly, this was a righteous man. And you also see a centurion in Acts, 
you know, stepping in for Paul for his rights and, and letting his, uh, his people know, hey, this man is a Roman. He's a Roman. You know, be careful how you treat him. S you know, stepping up for his rights and defending the rights of, of his people. Now, that's what we want the cops to do for us. So why, you know, don't spit on them, don't curse them. We need them on our side. And that's how people change. And look, that's how nations change is the love of Christ, not some carnal hatred for cops that we learned from copblock.org or from copwatch. Look, copwatch and copblock are a bunch of communists and weirdos and potheads. You know, I tried to bear with them long and they make some good points. And yeah, cops do break the law. They have a great responsibility. They're under a microscope, but cop block and cop watch are weirdos. They're communists, they're anarchists, they're strange. Now, what did I say we were going to? Matthew 27. So in Matthew 27, the Bible says, you know, and the centurion and they that were watching, or, and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly this was the son of God. What do we see? Uh, salvation? Uh, he confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He confessed that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Look, and I thank God that my uh, pastor gave me an example. You know, he went out and reached all these cops for Christ that are deacons now. And great, great Christians. It's really cool because who else would you want? I mean, if anything, you want, if you're going to have cops, you want them to be Christians. You want them to be saved. You want them to be Baptists independent fundamental Baptist. You want them to have the love of God in their heart. You want them to be people that love their neighbors as, as their self. So do you think you're gonna encourage them to do that if you're uh, showing them hatred? No. Now, um, I think this is pretty self-evident. I mean, look, I understand the frustration with our dwindling rights in America. I understand the frustration with the stranglehold that has been put on our Constitution and the assault on the Second and First and Fourth and Fifth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment and the Ninth Amendment and every amendment, the, the, the Constitution in whole, in its entirety. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to turn there, but you know the story of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Look, Cornelius was a man who feared God with his family. And he would pray to God. He was a centurion of the Italian band. And God specifically sent Peter to go minister to Cornelius. So I think we need to keep this in perspective. And don't hate a cop if he pulls you over. Look, God is the one who allowed us to um, be under the thumb of police. I mean, that's, you know, don't fight God in that way that's my opinion you know maybe we wouldn't need the police if since the 1960s we were a little more self-restrained if we were a little more um less free love and drugs and booze and faggotry okay and and alcoholism and drunkenness and drugs and all of our sins maybe it's our fault but we shouldn't take it out on the centurion I mean, we should pray that God will work in their heart the same way he did in Cornelius' heart and the same way he worked in the heart of the centurions who saw a great miracle done at Calvary and um, said, truly, this is the Son of God. That's my opinion. And uh, let me know what you think. Look, anybody who knows me knows that I am, I tend towards not being agreeable towards authority. That's something I really have to work on. However, this seems evident to me. And anybody who knows me know that, look, I've posted a lot of anti-police propaganda or even, you know, uh, news stuff, news articles in the past, many of which is true and many of which I agree with. And those who abuse their positions of authority that is repulsive to me. However, we should love the individual centurion. And you know, you, you deal with people according to their own sin, not according to their constituent sin. And I think we should get rid of this, this idea like, you know there's no such thing as a good cop? Come on now, 
come on. You know, maybe, what if your sins at work were so magnified? You know, you know, I, and I know, the reason I say I know this now is because I've met them and I love them and they're people who are my friends. Many cops want to do the right thing and they don't want to lose their pension and just, they're not just shooting black people for sport and they're not looking to uh, ruin the lives of young men for no reason. And the ones that are, they should be held accountable. The cops that are murderers should be held accountable and should f receive justice. And there should be no double standard. That's something that needs to change. The double standard and the, um, you know, the brotherhood of even protecting violent fellow police officers, that's not biblical because the Bible teaches you're not supposed to hide somebody who is supposed to be delivered unto death or um, has committed a grievous crime. You're not supposed to partake in that sin or crime by hiding them, you know, especially if they committed some kind of really violent crime that ruined someone's life. Nevertheless, we shouldn't hate the centurion. Jesus ministered to the centurions, and there are a lot of examples of centurions coming to Christ and having faith in God. And that's my prayer for the United States of America, because when things go down, we want these men on our sides, because a lot of them are good family men, and they're strong, and they've got a good shot, and they want to uh, protect the Constitution, and they want to protect their communities. But you know what? Don't be the stumbling block that causes them to harden their heart towards their fellow countrymen. All right, guys, have a good night.